Welcome to the fifth video in my conducting series. In the first four videos, we talked briefly about what a conductor is doing, about the baton and how to use it, about tempo or speed, dynamics and style. Now we're going to get into how the conductor communicates this to the musician, how they show them what it is they want them to play. Music is a linear art form. It happens across time. If you look at a picture or a painting or a sculpture, that's a snapshot in time. It may create a whole story in your imagination, but what the artist created is just a moment caught in time. Music happens across time. So the conductor needs to show the musicians how to play each moment of time. But if they show it to them as they're supposed to play it, it's too late. By the time the musician sees the conductor, interprets the conductor, and then performs it, that moment is gone. So the conductor has to show them what to do before they play it. And that is called the preparatory beat. What a preparatory beat is, in its simplest form, is the motion the conductor is making, one beat before the musician is supposed to play, showing them how fast to play, how loud to play, and with what style. That is the preparatory beat. The most obvious preparatory beat is the one that happens before the piece of music begins. If you're in the concert hall, it gets quiet, the conductor stands there, the conductor moves, and then the music begins. That motion they make just before the sound is created, that is the preparatory beat. It is showing the musician tempo or speed, dynamics or volume, and the style the conductor would like them to play. If I'm starting a piece of music and I want the musicians to play slow, let's say this fast, then my preparatory beat will happen at this speed. As you can see, if I want them to play this way on the first beat, which means when my baton comes down, beat one is right there, then one beat before that, I move at that speed. If I want it to be fast, like here, then, then I move faster. I'm showing them how fast to play on that downbeat, one beat before they're supposed to play it. If I want them to play soft, then I'm, slow, then I'm small when I start. If I want them to be loud, then I'm loud when I start. If I want them to be very smooth, legato when they start, then I'm going to show that to them. If I want them to be very separated, then I'm going to conduct it very separated. I'm showing them style, dynamic, and tempo one beat before they are supposed to play it. If it's on the downbeat, which comes down, beat one, then my preparatory beat will go up so that I can come down into the beat. If, I, if they're going to be doing it on beat two and I'm in four, four, beat two comes in one, two. It's an inward movement. So my prep beat will go out, out, two, so that they can see beat two. If it's on beat three, which is an outward motion, one, two, three, then my prep beat will come in, prep, three. And if it's on four, which is up, then my prep beat will go down, up. It'll go down, play on beat four. So I'm prepping one beat prior to the beat they're supposed to play on so that they know how to play that beat.
Now, one very important technical aspect of conducting I have not talked about yet is called the ictus, I-C-T-U-S. The ictus is actually the point within the conductor's motion that shows the musician the beat. That is where my rebound from one direction to the next direction happens. When you see me stop moving this way and start moving this way, that moment is the ictus. We rebound off of that ictus, which is the point showing the musician where the beat is. When I'm working with students, one way that I try to help them to really cleanly be able to show an ictus is by getting more wrist action. Within the bigger motion, there's a tiny little flick of the wrist that creates that ictus. There's two ways I like to explain it to them. If I have a drip of water on the end of my finger and I'm trying to get the water off my finger, I flick my wrist. You can think the same with the baton. If the water is at the end of the baton, I'm trying to flick it off the wrist, off the baton. Another way to uh, explain this to them is the analogy of a hot stove. If my hand is the stove and it's hot, when I go to touch it, my hand comes off very quickly. That motion to take my hand off of that hot burner is the kind of motion of the wrist, or what I call the flick, that we're trying to create to help cleanly see where the ictus is, which shows the musician the beat. So if I conduct without the flick of my wrist, you can kind of see where exactly is my change of direction that allows them to know where the beat is. There's, it's open to some interpretation. But then when I add the flick, it becomes very obvious. Now you can see where the beat is. Thank you for watching. For more great videos, subscribe to the Maestro Fox YouTube channel. To learn more about the Maestro, visit StephenLLNFox.com.